The standard drop shadow in After Effects isn't terrible, but it's definitely lacking, and we can do a lot better. So today I thought I'd show you how to make two different drop shadow styles that kind of make the standard one look a bit sad. One of them is a more natural and realistic version of the standard drop shadow, which revolves around the idea of stacking normal drop shadows on top of each other to create a more nuanced and detailed one. The other one's got a more stylized, clean look to it, which is basically made by strongly blurring your layer in a direction and then clipping the alpha channel to turn it solid. Okay, so let's start by making an improved drop shadow, which isn't really hard to do considering the standard one is really just three basic effects stacked together. A transform to move the shadow, a fill to make it black, and a blur to make it softer. Now that's all fine if you're not looking for anything too fancy, but you can really make things look so much better with a shadow that closer represents what a real diffused shadow would look like. Something that's more directional and gradual. And to get that more gradual directional look, all we have to really do is stagger multiple drop shadows on top of each other, getting further away and softer each time. Now, it would be a bit annoying and sort of unusable if we had to go in and adjust each value manually every single time we made a change, but don't worry. I'll show you how to link them together so that the changes happen automatically, and at the end, I'll show you how to turn all of this into a preset so that you can apply it to anything you want as easily as applying a normal drop shadow. All right, so getting started with a clean slate here, I'll apply the first drop shadow to my object, set the opacity to 20% and the distance to five. Then I'll select it, hit enter, and rename it to shadow one. Now double clicking the effect to open its properties down here, I'll grab the pick whip next to the direction and drag it over to itself. I'll also do the same for shadow color and opacity. The reason we're making these properties reference themselves in this particular way is so that when we duplicate the shadow four more times, all of the directions, shadow colors, and opacities will have the same expressions applied to it, which all reference shadow one's values. So selecting drop shadow one, we'll hit control or command D to duplicate it four more times. And here we see that if I change the direction of shadow one, they all copy it. Now to set the softness for shadow one, hold alt or option on a Mac and click the stopwatch. Then we'll drag its pick whip to the distance value to reference it, and we'll multiply it by two. Now whatever we change our distance to, the softness will always double it. And for the rest of our distance values, it's gonna be the previous shadow's distance times two. And the rest of the softnesses will be the current shadow's distance times two. So we can actually save ourselves the work of pick whipping back and forth by just copying the expression we have for shadow one softness and modifying the reference each time. Holding Alt or Option on a Mac, left click the distance for Shadow 2 and paste the expression directly inside. We won't even need to change it since it already references the previous shadow's distance and multiplies it by 2. Next we'll paste it again inside the softness expression box, but this time make it reference its own distance. Then we'll just carry on doing that for each shadow. Shadow 3's distance will reference the second one's multiplied by 2, and its softness will reference its own distance multiplied by 2, and so on. And when you're done, you should have our improved drop shadow ready to go. We could change the color, opacity, direction, and distance of shadow one, and all of the changes to the rest of them will be applied automatically. One more thing you can do is make the distance slider easier to work with by changing the slider's range into something that suits our improved shadow a little more. First, go ahead and increase the distance as high as you think you'll ever want it. I'd say around 35 might be the top end. Then right click the distance, choose edit value, and here we can modify the slider's range to go from zero to 35. Now the slider only operates on values we're actually gonna use and makes it a lot easier to control. To make our new improved drop shadow into a preset, all we have to do is select all of our drop shadows. Then over here on the effects and presets panel, we'll open this menu and choose save animation preset. Once you name it and save it, you'll be able to search for the preset just like you would for any other effect and apply it to your layers. And obviously as it's essentially just a bunch of drop shadows on top of each other, it'll work on anything you'd normally use a drop shadow on. All right, so now let's take a look at the second drop shadow we'll be making, a more stylized long shadow that you often see in motion graphics. The root of this one stems from four main effects. CC radial blur, which blurs the layer outwards away from a point. Levels, which we use to clip the alpha channel and turn the blur into a solid. Fill, which we use to turn the shadow black. And lastly, CC composite, which we use to put the original layer's contents back on top of everything else. That being said, there's a few things I generally like to add into the mix that I think makes this look even better. So let's walk through creating a long shadow. Again, I'll start with my square here, and the first thing we'll add is CC Radial Blur. Next, we'll change the type to straight zoom, increase the amount a bit, and then move the center point away from center. This is basically the fake light source that controls our long shadow. Now, what you'll notice here is our blurs being cut off by the layer's boundaries, so it looks kind of trash. What most people do to get around this is pre-compose the layers that they want to have long shadows on, and then apply all the effects onto that pre-comp, since its boundaries will fill the current composition and we won't see any of that cutoff. 
that's definitely an option, but what I prefer to do is keep the whole effect to one layer without having to pre-compose things if I don't have to. To get around this boundary issue, we'll go to Effect, Generate, Circle. Generating a circle like this is going to trick After Effects into ignoring the layer's boundaries, so all we have to do now is hide the circle. First, change its blending mode from None to Normal, and we should be able to see the radial blur again. Next, grab the circle effect and raise it above the blur so that the circle is generated before the blur is. Now we should see that the radial blur is ignoring our layer's boundaries. Finally, we'll just turn the circle's opacity down to zero. Sweet. So we're using the radial blur to give us the long shadow shape that we want, but the thing is since it's a blur, we're not quite getting the neat solid edges that we're after. So let's add levels to our layer to fix that. Inside levels, go ahead and choose to target the alpha channel specifically. After we do that, you'll see as I drag the input white handle to the left, our blur is getting more and more solid. Basically, over here we have the stuff that's fully solid in our layer, and over here we have the stuff that's completely transparent. Everything else lies in this range somewhere. So essentially what's happening here is we're squishing the range down so that there are less values between fully solid and fully transparent. Now if we just go down here and manually set the input white of our alpha channel to 1, we're forcing everything to either be fully transparent or fully solid. So now our long shadow is really starting to take shape, but a consequence of what we just did with the levels is this jagged edge that our shadow has, since we forced the pixels to either be fully solid or just non-existent. Another problem is that if we zoom in here, we can see that our shadow extends past the outline of our original layer's contents. We can actually fix both of these problems with one effect called Matte Choker. As soon as we throw it on, it pretty much fixes both issues right away. What it does is chokes or pulls in the edges of everything that is not fully transparent. And with its default values, it even softens the jagged edges for us too. I usually raise the geometric softness to 10 because I like it a little smoother though. Now we apply our fill effect so that we can change its color to black. Also, the fill's opacity is what we're going to be using to change the opacity of the actual shadow itself. So I'll just go ahead and bring that down to 30 or so. Then the last main step is to apply CC Composite. That just takes the original layer's contents before any effects are applied to it and lets us composite it in front of all the other effects. We just have to disable the RGB only option so that it uses the original layer's transparency as well, and there we have it. This is pretty much the basic long shadow effect. When it comes to long shadows, sometimes it can weigh a little bit on your PC, so I suggest lowering the quality to something like 20 until you're ready to render. Then you can go ahead and raise it back up as high as you want. Also, as you move the light source further away, you'll get less angular shadows, which is most likely what you'd want, but the shadows will also become a lot longer too, so I usually just move the light source to get the shadow direction and angle that I want, and then use the amount value to dial in the length that I want. And by the way, if you didn't know, holding shift while you drag a value in After Effects will change it a lot faster, and holding control or command while you drag it will change it a lot slower. So you can use those to get the values you want a lot easier. Like what we did with the improved shadow, you can go ahead and select all the effects and turn it into its own preset so that you can apply it easily wherever you want to. And, and that's it. That's how to make two alternative shadows that I think are a lot cooler than the standard After Effects drop shadow. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in a comment down below. And to do that, we'll move the mouse downwards past the like button, but what I'd recommend is we actually go back up and click the like button first before we continue on downward. Also, if you notice a bug where the subscribe button is red, you should try clicking on that to fix it before continuing on downwards to the comment box. And yeah, that's, that's where you can type your comment. Why are you, why are you still here?